Hey everybody, uh, my name is Joe Seppi and I work for a company called IBM, International Business Machines. We've been around for 100 some odd years and counting and um, I am an open source engineer and advocate there at IBM and uh, I'm very uh, lucky and fortunate to uh, have this role where I do uh, the majority of my work in the community. I have worked in the Node.js community for a number of years and was a part of the group who helped merge the JS Foundation and the Node.js Foundation into the now OpenJS Foundation, which happened a little over a year ago. And I currently am the chairperson of the Cross Project Council, which is the top technical advisory committee within the foundation. And we work in the CPC, the Cross Project Council, to um, you know help help projects to uh, be successful, whatever that means for them, and uh, support them with infrastructure or security or standards or you know code of conduct and moderation uh, processes, things like these. Um, I'll also just add real quickly that we meet every Tuesday, the Cross Project Council, and uh, we have lots of work to do. If you have any interest in the work that we are doing, uh, please join us. You can find more information on the openjsf.org site slash collaborate gives you uh, links to Slack and uh, the GitHub uh, repos and, and uh, the calendar and uh, a variety of things that may be helpful. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Let's, uh, let's talk about contributing to open source. Uh, I want to mention at the outset that uh, the kind of um, uh, center of the road here for this journey is talking about new contributors. But I hope that, um, you know, I'll, I'll also raise uh, things that will be helpful for maintainers or other seasoned uh, open source contributors along the way as well. So to get things started, I think it makes sense to talk about uh, etiquette and kind of uh, how you approach uh, open source and, and uh, contributing to repositories in the open source space. I know that this can, in some instances, be, be very daunting. Um, I understand that because every time I open up Node Core to uh, get some work done, I am daunted myself. So uh, I feel your pain there, but uh, I encourage you to, to you know, um, once you get over that wall, it's, uh, it's, it's easier every other time, and, and um, I encourage you to, to, to get started. Um, I'll also add that it's uh, when you're interacting with uh, folks in open source, remember to be courteous. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Always assume good intentions. Uh, I, I would recommend that you take some time to read uh, documentation around contributing um, and the processes that uh, are are in place for contributing to different repositories, well, whether they be, you know, code style uh, linting or um, commit message format and things like that. Um, make sure you put in a little effort up front to understand what uh, the project is expecting of new contributors so that um, you have less friction uh, down the line. And I also encourage uh, new contributors to um, you know, be open to constructive criticism. It's sometimes difficult to put code out there and have it critiqued in an open forum, uh, have people commenting on it. Uh, but this is a great way to learn. It's really, I've found the best way to learn and to engage with, with, with folks around open source uh, because it really drives you to, to you know, think through things uh, thoroughly and to think about edge cases and testing and, and all these sorts of things. So. Um, remember that most of the people in open source are humans and you should assume good intentions and, um, you know, just dive in and, uh, it's, it's typically a good experience. So I encourage you to, to do that. Similarly on the opposite side for maintainers and, uh, collaborators in projects, remember that it is daunting for new, uh, contributors. So uh, be kind, be gentle. Uh, remember, assume good intentions on on both sides. Right there, there are no dumb questions. Let's be courteous to each other. 
Uh, be sure that your contributing guidelines and um, the things that go along with that are clearly documented, like what you expect from commit messages uh, if you are particular about that sort of thing. So, you know, on the opposite side, uh, just make sure that, that things are in place for contributors to feel welcome and feel enabled and um, are, are lacking blockers to uh, get involved, right? So one place that I would start to encourage folks to look at is the community health of a project. So if you know a particular project that you are considering getting involved in, I recommend you go to that repository and you'll notice in the tabs along the top, there is an insights tab. And if you click on that, there's a community sub tab, I guess you'd call it. And within that community uh, view into the project, you'll find um, links to uh, the code of conduct, contributing guidelines, license, you know, a few, a few uh, metrics that GitHub has determined are good indicators of uh, a project's um, health as it relates to the community and particularly uh, new contributors. So those are some important things to check out. Of course, you'll want to look at the license and make sure that that's, uh, that works for you. And uh, if you're unsure about licensees, li licenses, uh, choose a license.org, I think it is, is a great uh, resource for learning more about the different types of licenses and uh, what they mean. As I've mentioned, check out contributing guidelines and such, which are referenced in the community health view there. But probably most importantly, the, the first place that I would go and look is the code of conduct. So make sure that there is a code of conduct in place. Uh, make sure that you are comfortable with it. Make sure that it is uh, extensive enough that that it covers, uh, um, you know, the, the, the different areas that you may be concerned with. There is a contributors covenant that a lot of projects use, and um, that that's great. A lot of folks have, have landed on that. I know that there are a couple others, uh, but definitely just make sure that something like that is in place so there, there aren't any issues down the road. I think having a, a good uh, code of conduct is a good indicator that the project takes these sorts of things seriously and is welcoming to new contributors. And I would also, on the flip side again, encourage maintainers and collaborators to uh, also view this page and see how your repository stacks up there. I'll mention that if you go and look at uh, github.com slash node.js slash node and look at the community health profile, uh, it, it's in pretty good shape. The, I mean, I think it's actually in great shape. There is, um, it looks like it's saying that the code of conduct, I believe is, um, is it the code of conduct or is it the contributing, maybe the contributing guidelines are not uh, fully in place. But if you click through to it, you'll actually find that the Node.js project through its uh, years of work has really developed um, robust uh, processes and guidelines around uh, things like code of conduct and moderation and contributing. Uh, the documentation there is, is, is very well fleshed out, and um, I think that you should find that very helpful and very encouraging. Uh, these are things that we've been working on for a long time. So if the community health uh, profile, um, you know, looks a little lacking, just make sure to click through and, and, and you know, double check for yourself uh, that the computers have got everything correctly. So moving on uh, from, from um, well, you know, let me, let me say, actually, I wanted to uh, also highlight this a uh, neat trick that I found someone posted on, on Twitter uh, a few months ago, perhaps, that if you go to a repository, say, for example, uh, node.js slash node, which is the node core repo, if you append slash contribute to any repository, it takes you to this really interesting view that uh, it appears to collect all of the good first issue labeled issues, but it also goes a step further and I believe tries to algorithmically uh, determine other issues that may be potentially good first issues. And I suspect that there's, there are some like documentation issues in there. Um, I don't know how it does it, but it seems like it tries to pull out issues that it thinks uh, would be good, good first issues, even if they don't specifically have that label on them. So that's a neat trick. Uh, definitely check that out. Um, there's also a link there for the contributing doc directly from that, from that view. 
Uh, so it's a really great place to, to, to get started. And again, I'll, I'll mention to maintainers and collaborators to also go to that page and see what your uh, project looks like in that view. So moving on, we have talked about the process that a project may have in place to contribute. And you'll definitely want to spend some time um, going through the, the this documentation so that uh, you can be successful in your contributions. So, you know, I think we've mentioned a couple times now, like Git commit messages. Uh, some larger projects are very particular about how you may... Um, format these messages, uh, code style guide, um, documentation style guide. Uh, there are a number of things that you'll want to just make sure you're aware of at the very least and may want to reference again before you open your first pull request that you are in line with, with what is expected. And I, I did notice today that from the node uh, contributing guidelines, uh, there's this really helpful paragraph that says, and I'll read this directly, if you are new to contributing to Node.js, please try to do your best at conforming to these guidelines, but do not worry if you get something wrong. One of the existing contributors will help get things situated and the contributor landing the pull request will ensure that everything follows the project's guidelines. So these are guidelines that are in place, um, but you know, don't feel like it's such a barrier that you won't get involved because there are people there that can help you. Now, another thing to be mindful of are any prerequisites that may exist for a project. Um, you know, Node has some uh, when you first get started and you are running Node locally, there, there are some things you need to be aware of. Um, and, and this can be tooling, this can be like underlying um, uh, dependencies, uh, but also it could be like concepts. So for example, uh, ESLint, which is another OpenJS Foundation project, it's largely based on AST, the abstract syntax tree. And so having a good understanding of how that works uh, will be beneficial to you getting involved in a project like that. So there may be some upfront uh, learning that you may want to do uh, depending on the project. So now I'd like to take a moment and talk about like the typical GitHub open source uh, contributing flow and what that looks like. And uh, it's, it's basically, you know, fork, clone, um, set your upstream branch, make changes, add those changes, commit, uh, create a pull request. So that's kind of the TLDR really quickly, but I'll, I'll just uh, go into each of those um, for, for a moment for folks that are uh, new to this process. So You'll go to the repository that you're interested in. So say uh, node.js slash node. And from there, you can uh, fork that repository to your own, uh, you know, your own account on, on GitHub. Uh, from there, you'll want to get the uh, Git link or the HTTP link and clone it locally. Uh, you'll CD into that directory. And the first thing that I do is I check the remotes. Um, I use Hub, which is a GitHub um, CLI tool. And so I just type Git Remotes. Um, but I think like Git Remote uh, LS, I can't remember exactly, but you can see which um, remotes are attached to your repository. When you first clone it, it should just have the origin set to your, um, your, your Git repository. So the first thing you'll want to do is do Git Remote Add Upstream and um, set that to the upstream repository. So node.js slash node in this instance. Um, if you don't have Git configured correctly, you'll want to add your username and your email uh, with git config user.name and the um, value and git config user.email and the value. So those are a couple of uh, ways to get things set up. It's it's uh, best, pra best practice to create a branch when you're contributing to an open source repository. And this way, you know, if you have a, a couple of different pull requests that may be open, they don't step on each other, right? So if you keep everything in a branch, you can work on that branch and know that the next pull request you open isn't going to include these other changes and muddy the waters. So uh, always use branches. You'll basically do your work, uh, the, the changes that you want to make, and then you'll git add the files that you're going to include in this uh, commit. 
And I'll say really quickly that it's best to keep your changes to a small set that is focused on a particular issue. Uh, try to avoid larger um, pull requests that may touch on a variety of things. You want to definitely keep it as um, um, you know as as, as uh, tightly knit as possible, as, as small and, and um, focused as possible. So once you make your changes, you'll add those files, git commit, uh, I'm sorry, git add, and then your files or git add period is what I usually use when, when I'm just focused on one little thing in a branch. Uh, git commit, uh, I typically add my commit message in line, um, whatever works for you. Uh, and then you'll git push origin your branch, right? So that's kind of the typical flow. Get your repository local, make your changes, git add, git commit, git push. With a, a project that has a lot uh, of moving parts, a lot of things changing, uh, you may also want to get uh, rebase your changes uh, from upstream so that when you create your pull request, it's in sync with what is the latest. And you may need to do that um, on an ongoing basic basis while your pull request is open. But you can do that with git fetch all, git rebase upstream master, and then git push force or force with lease. Um, a note that uh, while rebase is is my friend, I think it should be your friend too, but you need to be aware that uh, when you push something with with force, it rewrites history. So it can be dangerous, but you know, just use it wisely. Uh, I use it all the time. So that's kind of the typical flow. Um, I within uh, that tool that I mentioned earlier, hub, you can create a pull request directly from the command line. And you know it's a, a it's a, a good uh, workflow to um, to be using when you're contributing to open source. But I wanted to highlight that not all uh, contributions are code, right? There are a number of ways to contribute to open source projects, and um, I think that this is uh, important to call out. So just in general. Uh, documentation is always a good place to, uh, to to get involved. In fact, one uh, a few months ago, I was working on a Gatsby um, uh, site, and I found some discrepancies, some things that weren't particularly clear to me. And uh, I just went and cloned the repo, and brought it down, and created a pull request. And um, uh, the gentleman that leads that project, his name is escaping now, is, was really very courteous, very appreciative, and and I uh, was happy to contribute. A really good experience there. Uh, so that docs are great. If you uh, have interest in building websites, you know a website uh, for the for the uh, project may be in place, and you can help there. Uh, project management, frankly, is something that is always needed um, in an in a, in a open source repository. Um, and then there could be other things like uh, social uh, media, uh, community outreach, those sorts of things. <clears throat> Um, and I'll touch on that more in, in a moment. Um, I'll just also add too that th with with projects like Node Red, which is another OpenJS Foundation project, uh, you can contribute nodes to the uh, programming interface. Um, Loopback is another open source project that um, I've contributed uh, the data source connectors to and, and done work outside of core. That that's uh, helpful. So there are a number of ways that you can contribute that aren't just the core code or even code in, uh, at all. So an another few ways that you can do that with a node is that we have these concepts of initiatives and uh, teams and working groups. So some, some examples are the, the release team, which involves code for sure, uh, because you're, uh, you may be backporting some things to different uh, release uh, lines. Um, but, but, but that's always a very active uh, team that, that uh, you can get involved with. Uh, the build working group is another team within Node. There is a, a website redesign team that's been active for a while, and uh, that's a great place to, to get involved too for Node. Um, you're, you're writing more kind of front-end code uh, for the website. Uh, internationalization is another great place. Uh, there's, there are not only the translations that are needed, uh, but also the underlying work that supports 
the translation effort, the the internationalization efforts. Uh, so those are those are a couple of good places. And then I mentioned social community outreach. Uh, Node has a newly formed social team, uh, so there'll be a group of us that are actually managing the social media uh, presence. Um, there's, you know, in the past have been community and outreach programs as well, uh, that are, that are great ways to get involved. And then there's a new initiative recently started, uh, for examples. So good, uh, straightforward, simple examples for, uh, a lot of, um, common use cases. So that's another place that we'd love some more contributions. And speaking of, of, of all these things, uh, I want to mention that the collaborator summit, uh, has been, uh, it, it was on Monday and is happening again on Thursday and Friday. So that's another great place to, to get involved in, uh, open source and the work that we're doing in the foundation and such. So a lot of people will ask me, you know, how do I, um, how does one uh, get their company to get more involved in open source? And as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, IBM is very supportive of my work in, in open source. And, and a lot, we have a lot of folks uh, in IBM that are working almost exclusively on, on open source. But I've, I've worked in a variety of other companies where, you know, it was a little bit more of a struggle to get uh, company time to be involved in open source. And there is an initiative called Open Source Fridays that I think is maybe started by GitHub. Um, uh, it's a good website that, that kind of um, is helpful in trying to do more of this stuff and particularly like dedicating Fridays to it. What I found successful at my time at Behance and Adobe was that we were doing a lot of work in open source. We relied on a lot of open source tooling. And so we took the Friday approach, but we we uh, alternated between uh, one Friday would be like, we would call it a bug bash and we would just try to clear out, you know, uh, bugs in our, in our backlog. Uh, we wouldn't focus on sprint work and feature uh, work. We would just try to knock out bugs. And then uh, the other Friday we would alternate would be an open source Friday. So, you know, one Friday is bug bash, next Friday is open source bug bash open source. And so that was a, a really great, like kind of middle ground compromise that I think uh, could work for a variety of uh, development teams. So you may want to consider that. I'll also point out a couple more um, resources for getting started in um, open source. There's the uh, great for new contributors showcase that, that GitHub has. Uh, there's the open source dot guide. Uh, which is great. It has a whole how to contribute section. Uh, there's also a first timers only website. That's a good resource as well. And then I'll uh, do a little shameless plug as well. I've, I've started an open office hours uh, biweekly meeting uh, for the OpenJS Foundation and we meet every other week. And sometimes it's just the open office hours uh, on a, on a few occasions. We've brought in uh, project maintainers, uh, someone from express ES Lint, uh, internationalization and Node.js. Uh, we have a few more that we're, we're lining up after the event. And uh, that's, a, I, I think, a really good place for folks to come and ask questions and to learn about how to get involved in particular projects. Um, so if you go to uh, github.com slash openjs foundation slash open dash office dash hours, you can see more there. And that's my talk. I hope that you all uh, get involved in open source and I hope that it's a really great experience for you. And uh, my Twitter DMs are open, uh, so feel free to message me or if you join the OpenJS Slack, feel free to message me there. Uh, I try to spend uh, uh, some time helping new contributors get involved, so just reach out and I'd be happy to help you too. Cheers.